One, two, yes. Good morning, Lucy. Good morning, Lucy. I would show you the class, but uh, but then I'd have to get them all to sign waivers that say it's okay for people in Finland to look mm -hmm. at me, and uh, but we're not going to. So, but they're all here. Everyone's here but you, Lucy. Yesterday, we were talking about light striking the plate, and out comes the electrons. Remember that? Remember that, Jaden? Light strikes the plate with energy. How much energy does it have? How much energy does each photon have? HF, whatever that is. Uh, F is the frequency of the light, which is different frequencies or different colors. H is Planck's constant. You have two versions of that, whether do you want joules or electron volts. And so that's the amount of energy in the photons. They strike the, and are absorbed by the electrons in the atoms of the metal. Those electrons gain energy from this. They they pop up uh, and are released from the atom, and it takes energy to do that, to pull them away from the protons. The protons are holding on, opposite the track. Uh, so some of that energy is used to release them from the protons, and then the rest of it is how much K, kinetic energy, they have as they leave. Okay, we went over all that yesterday, and we got the equation, the maximum kinetic energy the electrons can have. This is K for the electrons coming out is equal to HF, that's the total energy that comes in, minus phi, and by the way, your textbook, I think, uses a W, because it's called work function, but the, your equation sheet and, and for the college board uses the Greek letter phi. That is the work function. That's the amount of energy it took just to pull them away from the proton. And that depends on the metal. Different metals have different work functions. Okay, so that's, that's a constant, but it's a constant for that material. I don't know if I said that yesterday. It, each metal would have its own work function. Okay, uh, so that's the photoelectric effect. And all Everything I've said so far is really what you got yesterday. And that's on your equation sheet right there as well for the photoelectric effect. Okay. Um, Okay, let's do the graph first because I didn't mention it right at the end of the period yesterday. If this is K, max, maximum kinetic energy of the electrons as they come out, that's on the y-axis, K. And on the x-axis, we put the frequency of the light that was coming in. Then we get a straight line. And it would be, it would look like what? Do you think it would, if this is zero kinetic energy and boom, and this is, I guess, zero frequency as well, it would start over here somewhere and it would be slanted up like that. Well, let's stop and think about that for a minute. What does that mean? Let me erase this random line over there now. Okay. At this frequency, you know, there are numbers down here on the x-axis, so that you can look up what is that. At that frequency, what? What's going on? If this light has that frequency, what's going on? Yeah, what is the kinetic energy? If the frequency is really that, the kinetic energy is zero. So that's the amount of frequency, if you multiply it times F, that's the amount of energy just to ionize the atoms, just to pull the, the electrons away from the protons. But then they used all their energy up doing that. They have no, they have no kinetic energy. So, so if they're really gonna come out, meaning they're moving, they have kinetic energy, it's gotta be more than this. This right here sometimes is called the threshold. T-H-R-E-S-H-O-L-D, frequency. 
because that's the amount, that's the minimum amount just to get them freed up from the atom. But if they're actually going to move out with some kinetic energy, it's got to be more than that. Okay, so that's the minimum frequency that will just get them away from the proton. Threshold frequency. Um, if you extrapolated this line, straight line, if I could make it look straight, down to here and found that point, what is that? Is that? Y That's the y-intercept, which would be what in our story? It would be where. That's the word function. Yeah. Okay, cool. See this. This is y equals mx plus b. So the work function is the plus b, but notice it, even in the equation it's minus b. And yeah, the work function on this graph is always going to be down below zero. It's going to be a negative number. Or I mean, the work function itself is a positive number, but you see, it's the amount of joules it would take. See, this is energy. It's the amount of joules it would take just to uh, free it. And so, there you go. So, what's the slope of this line? It's uh, Yeah, H. Everybody see that? Pretty common question is to is related somehow to this. Maybe there's a lab where you graph some points and you've got this line and you're going to use it to find H. Well, it's just the slope of the line. Just find the slope. And the slope's the same everywhere. So pick two points on it, the way you've been doing now for, for a couple of years, and base that on, pick those two points, easy to read, and find the slope from that. The slope has to be H. Now, if these are joules, and frequency is hertz. Frequency is going to be hertz. That's all we know. But if this is joules, then that slope should be about 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. Unless I got that wrong when I did it yesterday. Is that really what H is? Y'all don't know, but I think it is. If, though, this is electron volts, then that slope is going to be the 4.14 number times 10 to the negative 15, I think. So realize there are two different versions of H. Pretty important which unit you've got up here. It's either joules or electron volts. That's all we know to use. Okay, so we've talked about all that. Make sure you get this graph. And somewhere on your AP exam, you'll see a graph like that. Or there have been years where you had to make the graph like that. Uh, but, yeah, that's going to be on the AP exam. It'll be on your test when you come back from wherever in the world you all are going. Where are y'all going on the senior trip? A cruise? Is it a cruise? To where? Bahamas. Bahamas. Is there cool. any coronavirus in the Bahamas? No. Uh, not yet. It's a pandemic. Some people are using that word. When we get down there, we'll probably be. By the time you get there, it'll be in Bahamas. You guys are going to be the only people left on the cruise ship. Everyone's going to be swimming. Oh, it's a cruise <laughs> ship, like too. Oh, I hate cruise ships. You know why I hate cruise ships? Because they get they get locked into the harbor in Japan. People are told to stay in their rooms. You can't even leave your room. You're in this little room with no windows, and it's like this big. You can't leave right. your room. Uh, I need I need some space on Fox Road. Too bad. That's what they say. And in the end, you know, you've got to stay there for two weeks. There's no air conditioning. It starts to stink after a while. Nobody comes cleans your bathrooms. Because they're afraid they'll get coronavirus. Don't get on a ship. Don't get on a ship. You'll end up in Japan in the harbor, <laughs> stranded. We're not a nation. I'm just telling you what I've seen on the news. Just telling you what I've seen on the news. Is it possible for me to edit this thing and cut that part out? I mean, it is, but... I would but uh, I don't know how, yeah. that's for sure. Okay. All right. This graph was the first thing today. We're moving on. We are not going to talk about that anymore. The next thing is... This is a quick clock. The next thing is this that I showed you yesterday. And so I don't need to do it again, but here I am doing it again. The energy is HF, but it's also equal to PC. Because you are going to get questions about the momentum of a photon. And you need to realize that's what this P is. 
and that this is not on your equation sheet. I told you all this yesterday, but I'm just reinforcing it now. Uh, because photons, pretend this is a photon moving at the speed of light. A little bundle of energy has no mass, but it's got energy. How much energy? HF, whatever that is. So it's moving with that much energy, and it collides with a big old electron compared to the photon that's big. All right, so photon hits the electron. What happens in a collision? What's conserved? In, in this case, energy is conserved because it is elastic. But momentum is always conserved. You could get momentum problems out of this. Yeah, except there's no mass. Conservation of momentum. But there is no mass for the photon. How in the world am I going to get momentum of the photon? Uh, right here. Oh. It's HF divided by C. HF, you know what that is. Make sure, again, you know whether you're dealing with electron volts or joules, so you know which H to use. But it's HF divided by the speed of light, C, 3 times 10 to the 8. That's momentum of the photon. And if the electron's not moving, the photon is moving, of course, speed of light. It collides with it, and when it leaves, here's what's common. After the collision, no matter which way it goes, uh, it has less energy now. Why would it have less energy? Because some of its energy went into the electron and made it move. Okay, it's conservation of energy. We, we don't lose energy. But you need to realize that uh, mv equals mv. Well, that's not really true because there's no m here. But here, its momentum is mv after the collision. Because it has mass. And this, this momentum was hf divided by c. You've got to think about momentum in two different ways now. For a photon, it's HF divided by C. And if that was not moving, then before the collision, this is the total momentum right here, HF divided by C. After the collision, the momentum is still equal to the same thing, but, this, but some of that momentum went into the electron, MV. So the momentum of the photon that bounces off is going to be less because they're going to add up to the total before. It's conservation of momentum. But it's still HF divided by C. So if that's less now, did we change H? No. H is H. It's a constant. Did we change C? No. That's the speed of light. Photons always move at the speed of light. So what are we true about the frequency of this photon after the collision? What would It'll be less. What would Lower frequency, which means it's a different color now of light. Maybe it went from... What would be a lower frequency? What's the lowest frequency you can see? Can you do like four times 10 to the eight? No, well, what color is it? Oh. It's red. And it would be about four times 10 to the 14th hertz. Okay. So the point is, sometimes this is called photon scattering. You might see that word when you read this section in your book. Have y'all already read about photon scattering? No. Maybe not. But if you have, or you will, uh, it's called that because the photon is moving, and photons all move at the speed of light, so the photon doesn't slow down after it hits. It's still moving at the speed of light. So what has to change is the frequency. Because some of its momentum does go into the electron. So you've got to deal with this in terms of conservation of momentum still. But what I'm telling you is momentum is now HF over C for the photon. For the electron, it's still MV. Okay. Um, so keep all that in mind, that, that momentum of a photon can still be thought of as momentum, but it's calculated a different way. Oh, and this whole thing is called the Compton effect. I, I don't know that you'll ever see that term on a, on a test, but you'll read it in your textbook. The Compton effect is photons colliding with something and losing momentum, which means they change color. They lose frequency. Frequency goes down. Compton effect. It's this whole scattering of photons in collisions with bigger particles. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say about that. We're not going to actually do an example. You might have an example somewhere in your homework. I don't know. But this concept I've seen on the AP exam, you need to be aware of this.
And I'm saying it again, this is not on your equation sheet. You're going to have to remember this. The momentum of a photon. E equals HF is all you see on the equation sheet. That's equal to PC. All right. That's the Compton effect. Brief introduction to that, but you'll read more about it in your book. And now, the last thing I want to mention in our lecture today before some of you go away and get your oil changed tomorrow and stuff like that. Uh, and then you go to the Bahamas. <sighs> Intensity of light. I'm not sure I've used that term, although intensity is a term that you're familiar with, maybe. What do you think intensity of light refers to? It's like the amplitude of light. Which is the what about the, the light? The brightness. This is the brightness. You Woo! Did you all do homework problem number one? No. Did you get that right? Or did you get it? Did you understand it? Because that's what this is about. I don't think it used the word intensity in the question. But this is what it's about. Brightness. Now here's the thing. You've always thought of brightness as power. Power is, is power is in watts, and which is the same as joules per second. That's power, and you've known that for a long time. Back in physics one, you learned power is work divided by time. And you work problems where somebody's pushing a box across the floor, doing some work. Remember those problems? Don't you long for those days? Wow, pushing a box across the floor. How much work did you do? What's your power? <laughs> you did 10 seconds. Okay, those days are gone, sorry. But power for light still exists. It's how many joules of energy from the light are hitting the plate. Let's go back to our this thing. Here comes light. How many joules of energy are hitting that plate every second? Joules per second, that's power. And you've always thought of that as brightness, but in fact, you, you go to the store and you buy 100 watt watt bulb and it's brighter than a 60 watt bulb okay so power does seem to mean brightness but it's really intensity which is intensity is it erase this so i've got room intensity is the number of photons hitting something per second which was the question i think in in homework number one how many photons per second so it was really asking you for tensity, even if it didn't use that word. Well, um, the intensity is this, can be thought of this way. I think in that problem even, number one, they gave you the power is something, some number of watts. Well, you need to realize that's joules per second, watts. And if you know the frequency, you can get the energy. If you know the, the color of light, so the frequency times H, you can get the energy. And energy would be, this is energy of a photon. Remember, that's what you learned. So this is joules per photon. So energy is joules per photon. Now, how could you take those two numbers and get photons per second? If you divide this by this, right? And you can, if you if you're doing number one, you could have just thought it through logically, reason it through, and think about it and come up with it. Really, if you're just looking at numbers and units, though, you still get it. Joules per set here. Joules per second divided by joules per photon. What does that simplify to? Photons per second. That's what this is. So the, the end result of this, what I would remember if I were you, is that you can get that by dividing power by energy. That's what we did here. Power is joules per second. Energy is joules per photon. Now this energy is, is this energy. It's the E equals HF. Okay, that's the E right here. It's the energy of a photon, which, which is HF. But if you divide power by energy, you'll get photons per second, and that's brightness. 
Um, the reason you've always thought of power as brightness is, in most problems, we're not changing this. This is, see, the energy is the frequency, really, and so you're comparing a white light bulb to another white light bulb, so they've, they've got the same F. You've got the same E. So if that's not changing, yeah, then power is directly proportional to intensity. If you go up to 100 watts, that's more intensity. That's more photons coming out of that bulb every second. So P over E is photons per second. Anyway, this is, this is really brightness, intensity. Okay, based on that, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and see if you can think this through. If I have... If I have the photoelectric effect going on here, here comes light and out comes, this is light, photons, and this is electrons coming out. If I increase the frequency, F you can ask that. If I increase the frequency of the light, F, but I don't change, but I don't change the power. It's the same number of watts. So I bring in a different bulb that has a different frequency, but it's got the same watts. The question is, what does that do to the current, the electrical current that's generated, that comes out of this plate? Okay, I've increased frequency, which means I've increased E, right? Increased frequency means I increase E. So this is now a bigger number, but that's the same number. So what happens to intensity? If this goes up, that stays the same. What happens to intensity? It goes down. It goes down, it goes down inverse proportion, which means fewer photons per second in the light. See, all this is about the light, intensity of the light, but fewer photons each second hitting the plate. Now, is that going to affect, is that going to affect the kinetic energy of the electrons? I don't think so. We, Maybe. we increased F, didn't we? Okay, so it's one over this. Now, phi depends on the plate. That didn't change, so that's the same. H doesn't change, so if I increase F, I increase K. So the answer to this, if, if I increase... I don't know if Lucy can see this, probably not. I'll write it over here. If I increase F, then I'm going to increase the kinetic energy, the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons. But did I change, how did it change the um, current coming out? The number of electrons coming out, is that going to be the same or more or less? Increase E. P doesn't change. Decrease then number of photons per second. Fewer photons per second. Fewer photons hitting the the electrons. So fewer electrons coming out. Does that make sense? So less current. Now that was a kind of a complicated question, but that's how I would think it through. Let me ask you another one. What if I instead of increasing F, what if I increase the brightness? The intensity. I increased, but but same F. So same color of light coming in, same F frequency, but I make it brighter. What does that do to the current coming out? Does that change it? It does. Does it change the kinetic energy? Yeah. No, because what? F is the same. Oh come on, man. Okay, same F. H doesn't change, phi doesn't change. If I tell you F doesn't change, then they're coming out with the same kinetic energy. K equals HF minus phi. So this does, brighter light does not give you more kinetic energy. It means the electrons are not coming out faster. But what about the number of electrons coming out each second? That's the current. Does that change? If I increase... The intensity, that means this number of photons per second is more. More photons per second hit more electrons per second, so more electrons per second come out, greater current. So this would 
increase the current that's flowing out of here. It's more electrons coming out, even though they have the same kinetic energy, each photon. This is the kinetic energy of, of a photon. That doesn't change. But there are now more electrons coming in every second. So that's what current is. Current is Q over time. See, more, more charge per second, more electrons per second. There you go. The, the, the thing I would definitely remember is this. Again, this is not on your equation sheet. The intensity is power divided by energy. But I would remember that. Because everything I just talked about can come from this. You can figure it out if you really have that in your head. This is brightness. Photons per second is brightness. You can calculate that as power divided by energy of a photon. Power is joules per second for the whole beam of light. That's power. That's, that's how much energy is hitting the plate every second. But this is energy of a single photon. See? Okay. That's that. We're going to now, in our last 10 minutes, I'll turn the video off. We're going to work on CYU questions. That is really homework. And I'm going to let you do it in class. Wait, oh, we didn't go over the homework that's due today, did we? I said we were going to. Which ones of those do you, we need to work? Probably number seven. Because somebody didn't have number seven done. Is that true? Or not? Do we need to do number seven or not? Do we need to do number one? Now that I've shown you this, can you do number one? I don't remember the question exactly. I just remember it was somehow related to this. Power divided by energy. Okay, which homework problems do we need to work? Any? Name one, if you have one. 11. Number 11. Oh, yeah, I said seven. Thank you. It was the last one. The, I was thinking the last one was a hard one. Let's do number 11. We will do that, and then uh, then you can work on CYU questions till, till uh, the cows come home. If you want. That's it. There really are no cows in this problem. All right, somebody read number 11, please. P equals HF minus P. Who's reading number 11? Sophia? Kyle? Somebody who's got it? Okay. Oh, I see number 11, yeah. Light is incident on the surface of metallic sodium whose work function is 2.3 EV. The maximum speed of the photoelectrons emitted by the surface is 1.2 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. What is the wavelength of the light? Okay, here's why this is a hard question. The units. This is electron volts, but this is velocity in SI units. Uh, the K is 1 half mv squared. But when you, when you multiply m times v squared, you've got to get joules. And you realize this equation gives you joules using the units that you know. This will give you joules. And yet they gave you phi in electron volts. Well, you've got to have everything in the same unit. It's either all joules or it's all electron volts. All right. And lambda is the question. Here's the way I would think about this. I would think of this as K is equal to HF, but F is C divided by lambda, isn't it? C is lambda F, so F is C divided by lambda, and the reason I write it this way is there's an HC on your constant page. You, you wouldn't even have to multiply H times C, it's on there. They, they, gave you, they gave you two versions of H, but they also give you an HC. You can just use that number, and then solve it for lambda, because that's the question. So that's, this is how you're going to do it, but still, I'll go back to the hard part. The K is going to be one half m velocity squared, and they gave you velocity. And the H and C you can get from the constant page, solve it for lambda. But the phi, if you're going to have joules here, and you will, probably what I would do is convert electron volts here to joules and do everything in joules. And then use the HC that's in joules. If you, 
You can do it all in electron volts, get this in joules and convert that to electron volts if you'd rather. Just make sure everything is the same. Okay, so when I did this, um, the mass of an electron, the velocity given, all that came out to be 6.558 times 10 to the negative 19th, and that's joules. That's one half mb squared. The hc I got from the constant page is 1.99 times 10 to the negative 25th. That's hc in terms of joules also. And then lambda is my unknown. And then phi, well, the problem said phi is 2.3, but that's electron volts. You've got to convert it to joules by multiplying it by the elementary charge, the charge of an electron. And that is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. So this is converting electron volts to joules. That's what this is. This is the HC given on your constant page. It's in terms of joules. And this is joules. This is one half mv squared. That would be joules. So everything's in joules. You can solve that for lambda and get the right thing. And the right thing is 1.9 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. And some of you had that. I remember walking around seeing that. Uh, you could have written that as 190 nanometers. You're into nanometers. That's a common unit. Okay. That's, that's how you think through number 11. It's just this equation, but you've got to pay attention to, am I dealing with electron volts or am I dealing with joules? Everything in that equation has got to be the same. All right. Everybody okay with how to deal with that now? That makes sense to you, Jaden? Jaden's asleep. That makes sense to you, Jaden? Yes, Bob. I'm asleep. You were dozing off. And I just went over the key to success on the AP exam. <laughs> I'm not repeating it, Jaden. But it's on video because, you know, it's on YouTube, people in Finland are looking at it right now. I'm going to stop this now, Lucy. Okay, bye. Do I hit that red button to stop it, really? I'm just, I'm not pausing, I'm just stopping it. Is that there right there?